Hi everyone, I'm Ricky Robinette and I lead up our developer relations and community team at Cloudflare. And I am so stoked to be talking to you all about developing in the age of AI. Over the past year, we've seen explosive growth of AI. ChatGPT alone was the fastest application to reach 100 million users, doing it in just two months, which still blows my mind. GitHub Copilot, which developers are using to have AI a system in writing code, has a million paying customers. So anyone who is building software is probably asking themselves, can I use AI to help spark growth for my business? Or can I use AI to help create great user experiences for my users? Or can I use AI to drive efficiencies in my business? I'm even seeing this in my own family. I built an application using Workers AI and Stable Diffusion, which is an image generation library, to let my seven-year-old daughter create her own coloring book pages of anything in her mind. This is one we made of a koala in front of a Brooklyn brownstone, and she loved it. Of course, it's not just fun in games. Fortune and Deloitte did a survey of Fortune 500 CEOs and 79% of them believe that AI investments will significantly enhance business efficiencies. Beyond this, Fortune and Deloitte asked these CEOs, are you already using or planning to use predictive and generative AI? For predictive AI, almost everyone said yes, it was in the 90%. For generative AI, it was still over 80% of Fortune 500 CEOs said they are planning to or are already using generative AI. This means if you're not, you run the risk of getting left behind. And what are they building? With predictive AI, which is AI that uses historical data to try to predict things that will happen in the future, they're building things like inventory management. So if you have a retail shop, making sure that you have the right clothes there at the right time can make you so much more money than being sold out of things that your customers need. And if you can predict that before anyone's bought any inventory, you are ahead of the game. All right, Cloudflare, something we've been doing for nearly a decade is anomaly detection. This is looking at standard traffic for a website and being able to detect when that traffic looks unusual and stop malicious or bad actors from doing things to your website that you wouldn't want them to do. With generative AI, which uses data sets to have AI generate new novel content that never existed before, we are seeing so much of this in the news. Like using ChatGPT to write an email for you that you may be stuck on, or a blog post, or a website copy. Or my example, image generation, where I used AI to create an image that never existed before. Our GitHub Copilot that we talked about, code generation, using AI to generate unique code to build applications that you're thinking of without even having to write the code yourself. So you're bought in, now what? If you're thinking of building with AI, there are three considerations you need to make. Number one, security. How can you be sure that your users and your company are safe when you're building with AI? Number two, readiness. How can you be sure that your users and sometimes more importantly, your executive and your board are ready for you to use AI in your business. And lastly, efficacy. How do you know that AI is even going to work and be the right tool for the job? Let's start with security, which is the thing I personally get asked about the most. How are we sure that the AI we're using is safe? Let's address the elephant in the room. A lot of people are already using AI, whether you like it or not, especially amongst developers. Stack Overflow did a survey where they found over 70% of developers are already using or planning to use AI applications to help them write code. This gets even more prevalent when you look at the next generation of developers, the people who are learning to code, where it's over 80%. So the reality is people are already using AI at your business. That's why we see a lot of headlines that look like this. Company bans staff's AI use spotting ChatGPT data leak. And I think this is the wrong answer for two reasons. First of all, if you stop everyone from using AI, you run the risk of having your company left behind against your competitors and peers who allow their employees to use it. Second of all, I'm a developer, I'm gonna be real. Developers like to find workarounds. So if you just shut off a tool completely, 
we are gonna find a way to use it if we don't agree with or understand the why. So instead of just shutting it off, what you should do is you should understand how people are using AI right now and why. Cloudflare can help with that, helping you detect shadow IT. But instead of turning off these applications, ask those users, what are you doing? And then give them guidelines, not stop signs. Tell them these are the use cases where we are totally okay with you using AI. And these are the use cases where we're okay with it, but you need to anonymize the data or make sure you don't send certain things or make sure you use this tool instead of that tool. This means that your employees will be happier because they'll be able to use tools that help them more efficient, but also you can be sure that your company and your users are safe. And if you're building applications, you have the same challenge. What if users of your application are sending data you don't want them to send? Or even worse, what if a bad actor starts abusing your system? That's why we built AI Gateway. In the same way that Cloudflare can sit in front of your website, make it more performant and protect it, we're doing the same with your AI applications. So when you make a request to AI APIs, you can be sure that the data you don't want to get there isn't, and that you are protected from bad actors. Next, let's talk about readiness. How do you know if your company, your board, your executive, your users are ready for AI? I'd like to introduce Robinette's Law, this idea that people tend to hold AI to higher standards and reliability than humans, often reacting more critically to errors made by AI, even if those errors occur less frequently than those made by humans. Let's use an example of medical misdiagnosis. So going to the doctor and being told you have something and you actually have something different. This happens tens of thousands of times in Australia a year. Stats say that a couple thousand people a year die in Australia from medical misdiagnosis, but you don't see it much in the news. Now imagine if someone got a medical misdiagnosis from AI, that would be front page news and rightfully so. Even WHO has urged caution over using generative AI in healthcare, talking about how we need to make sure there's humans in the loop so that AI doesn't do something it's not supposed to do or give wrong information. So when you're thinking about using AI, ask yourself, what are the stakes of what you're using it for? If it's something high stakes like medicine, Maybe it's not the time, or at least make sure you're doing it with humans. But if it's something lower stakes, it's a great opportunity to test it out and prove it out to everyone involved how it works. AI is also moving so fast. That's why I think it's important to start small and move fast. If it takes you months to build a project plan, get executive buy-in, and then build and ship the thing you want with AI, it's probably gonna be too slow. It's better to pick something small and digestible that you can do quickly. Let's say you decide you wanna build a bot that helps developers build more efficiently at your company. That's a pretty big project. How can you slim that down? Well, you could say, can it help with errors? Not all software development, just errors. And maybe instead of building a bot from scratch, can you use a tool that already exists? With me, for the longest time when I had an error, I would go to Stack Overflow. I have a 500 error, what do I do? And I'd read through all the questions until I found the answer I needed. Lately, I've been using ChatGPT, and this is an experiment you could run, whether it's with ChatGPT or GitHub Copilot, Continue, which is an IDE plugin, or Cursor, which is an AI IDE itself. And after you run this, you could write up the results and say, I spent a few days trying out AI to help me debug, this is what I learned. And then you could have other developers at your company try it out too and say what they've learned. You've taken a project that was months long and you've learned something in a week that you could apply. And instead of stopping there, you can keep iterating and keep running and keep moving fast, keeping everyone updated along the way so that they have buy-in and they see how it works. <music> Lastly, Let's talk about efficacy. How do you know if AI is even the right tool for the job? For me, using AI has been magical. I have had so many nights where I've been up slinging code till 3 a.m. just to see what I could do.
But we have to acknowledge AI isn't magic. It is computers. And there are things computers are good at and things computers aren't good at. For example, at Cloudflare, we know computers aren't good at randomness. To help protect the internet, we need unpredictable random data. That is why we have a wall of a hundred lava lamps at our office in San Francisco. Because computers aren't good at generating random, unpredictable data, but the real world is. And as you'd expect, lava lamps are unpredictable. The way the lava moves is different every time. That means we're able to capture a picture of 100 lava lamps and generate something unique, random, and unpredictable whenever we need it. What many have discovered is that LLMs are uniquely bad at randomness. The first time I realized this was actually a Reddit post, and the post said, every conversation with ChatGPT, if you ask it to roll a dice, it will almost always give you back the number four. And I couldn't believe this when I read it. I tested it out myself, it was true. And it, it made sense once I thought about it. The way that a large language model works is it's thinking about what is the most likely next word. So you probably know what I'm gonna say next. Hopefully you said that at home. Uh, and so if you are building an application where you need it to not say something predictable, it may not be the right tool for the job. Beyond that, not all tools are created equal. You have to look at AI through a lens of many different variables. Performance, how quick do you need it to be? Cost, how much are you willing to spend to solve this problem? Accuracy, are you solving a problem where it's okay that it's not always accurate or do you need 100% accuracy? Privacy, where are you okay sending your data? And developer experience, the thing that I think the most about, what is the easiest and quickest for you to use? At Cloudflare, we built our developer platform to take into account all of these things. We had to put servers all over the world so that we could be fast for users wherever they're at. And we realized at a point that not only could we run our code there, we could let developers put their code there. This means that if you're in Australia, you don't have to wait for an application to run its code in the east coast of America. It can be in a server in Australia right by you. That is how our developer platform works. We did the same thing with GPUs. We put GPUs in servers all over the world, which means when a developer builds on workers' AI and their users use that application, we are running that AI as close to the user as possible, creating a better user experience. Whatever you're thinking about building, reflect on the three things we talked about. Security, how can you make sure what you're building is safe for your users and your company? Readiness, how prepared is everyone involved for AI to come into play at your company? And efficacy, are you using the right tools for the job? But most of all, have fun. This is the most fun I've had as a developer in my decades of writing software, and I hope you have the same experience. And whatever you build, we'd love to see it. Join us on our community forums at community.cloudflare.com or in our developer discord. Thanks a lot.